today on Keeping It Technical. We will be looking into a not-so-well-known field of infrastructure asset management. Now this is not to say that it is totally unknown as after all we do have some examples of countries that have been practicing it for decades and are quite advanced at it. But as always before we begin, please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel so we can continue to spread the knowledge. Now I think it's fair to say that when one first hears the word asset management, engineering is not the first thing that comes to mind. You would not be wrong for imagining fund managers and investment bankers in suits engaged in the art of investment diversification to spread out investments across a variety of different asset portfolios in order to minimize risk and increase returns. But in fact, there are multiple forms of asset management, and today we will be looking into infrastructure asset management and will try to answer a few questions about it, such as What is infrastructure asset management? How did infrastructure asset management come about? What are its main concepts? As well as how can our government benefit from it? So firstly, let's try and define what is infrastructure asset management. So, in short, infrastructure asset management can be defined as the process of managing the physical assets that support critical infrastructure systems, such as transportation and road networks, utility systems such as water and electricity, and public buildings. This includes planning, designing, constructing, operating, maintaining, and the decommissioning or disposal of these assets. The goal of infrastructure asset management is to ensure that these assets are available, reliable, and safe for the public to use, while also maximizing their economic and social value. To achieve these goals, infrastructure asset managers use a variety of tools and techniques, such as asset condition assessment, asset risk assessment, asset performance modeling, and asset life cycle management. We will later investigate each of these concepts in detail. Now that we have a basic outline of what infrastructure asset management is, the next question is how did it come about? Although infrastructure asset management is a relatively new field in comparison to most fields, it has evolved over the past few decades in response to the increasing complexity and cost of infrastructure systems. One of the earliest examples of infrastructure asset management projects can be traced back to the 1960s, when the United States Federal Highway Administration began using a computerized system to track and manage its road infrastructure assets. In the 1980s, the concept of infrastructure asset management began to gain wider recognition as governments and private sector organizations around the world began to recognize the need to manage their infrastructure assets more effectively in order to ensure their long-term sustainability. Since then, the field of infrastructure asset management has continued to evolve and grow with the development of new technologies, tools, and best practices. Today, infrastructure asset management is an important part of the way that governments and organizations around the world plan, finance, build, operate, and maintain their infrastructure assets in advanced economies such as those of Australia, Canada, and the United States to name a few. Now that we understand the main goals of infrastructure asset management, the next question is what systems are used to achieve these goals. For the sake of this channel and not boring the viewer with a long-winded detailed answer, we will simply break it down into four main tools and techniques with a short breakdown for each. The four main tools and techniques used by infrastructure asset managers include Asset Condition Assessments Asset Risk Assessments Asset Performance Modeling And finally, Asset Life Cycle Management Asset Condition Assessment is the process of evaluating the current condition of an infrastructure asset in order to identify any deterioration, defects, or problems that may affect its performance or safety. This can involve visual inspections, testing, and monitoring of the asset, as well as the use of specialized techniques such as non-destructive testing and remote sensing. The results of the condition assessment are used to prioritize maintenance and repair activities and to develop plans for asset replacement or rehabilitation. Asset risk assessment is the process of evaluating the likelihood and consequences of potential risks to an infrastructure asset. This can include risks from natural disasters, such as earthquakes or floods, as well as risks from human activities, such as vandalism or sabotage. The results of the risk assessment are used to prioritize risk reduction measures and to develop contingency plans in case an adverse event does occur. 
Asset performance modeling is the process of creating mathematical models to predict how an infrastructure asset is likely to behave over time. These models can be used to forecast the asset's future condition, performance, and cost, and to optimize maintenance and repair strategies. Asset performance models can be based on a variety of factors such as the asset's age, material properties, load history, and environmental conditions. Asset life cycle management is the process of managing an infrastructure asset from its conception to its decommissioning. This includes identifying the need for the asset, developing design and construction plans, operating and maintaining the asset, and ultimately retiring or replacing the asset when it reaches the end of its useful life. Asset life cycle management is focused on maximizing the economic and social value of the asset over its entire lifespan, by optimizing its performance and minimizing its costs. Now of course these four tools and techniques are not the know-all and be-all as there are some nuances in how different industries practice asset management, but they do somewhat form the standard base or template which asset managers work from. Now as always in this channel the big question is how can a country like South Africa benefit from asset management? Although infrastructure asset management cannot solve all the problems facing our beloved country, it can benefit South Africa in several ways. Firstly, it can improve the efficiency and effectiveness of infrastructure delivery and maintenance, leading to better services for citizens and businesses, hopefully no need to mention our lights-out lights-on problems. Secondly, it can help to optimize the use of resources, such as financial, human, and material, by prioritizing investments and maximizing returns. Thirdly, it can help to ensure the sustainability of infrastructure by promoting long-term planning and the use of best practices in design, construction, and operation. Fourth, it can help to reduce the risks associated with infrastructure projects and operations, such as financial, legal, and safety risks. And finally, it can help to support economic development and social cohesion by improving access to essential services and facilitating the movement of people and goods. By using asset management tools and techniques, government agencies can track and report on the performance of their assets, which can increase transparency. This can help to build public trust and confidence in the agency and therefore bring about increased transparency and accountability. So that is in short, a brief but somewhat detailed explanation on what is infrastructure asset management, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe so we can grow the channel and continue to look at more complex topics in the engineering space. Till next time. And as always keep it technical.